I was glad I was not there when this had transpired. I was glad I know I was not there when that transpired. So he said, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Sometimes God's going to put you through that phase of life when you're going to have to cry day and night. And some, some of us don't want to, we, we don't want to endure that. We don't, we don't want that to happen. We don't want that type of season in our life. We don't want the tears to fall from our face. We want to sit there and have a few tears here and there. But something you got to go through a crying period, a, a weeping period, because the water that falls from your eyes is not in vain. Amen. The groaning in the spirit is not in vain. I'm telling you now, I'm trying to encourage you on tonight, that it's not in vain that God is not sitting there being slowful. And he's not lacking concerning his promise. You got to sit here and read the word of God and say that God, if you said it, then I believe it. If you said it, then that's it. That settles it. It is done. Finished. But me, though, that's it. That's all of it. I don't need nothing else and nothing less. If you said it, then that is it. It finishes it. It finishes it. But we have to go on with that period in that same faith and say that, God, I know I'm crying now. I know that I'm going through now, but I still believe in your word. I still trust in your word. Don't let these tears fool you. Don't let these tears fool you and feel like that. I done took my faith from God and I took my trust from God and said I depend on myself. But I'm crying to keep myself together. I'm crying so that God may hear me that every tree that falls from my face, that if I'm with my God, if I'm so in sorrow, that I will soon be good. But my God ain't going to come in the morning. Oh, yes. Yes. Weeping, man, burn for a night. My God, the joy, my Lord. Joy comes in the morning. Oh, yes, it does. Joy, these things are seasonal. You ain't going to weep forever. You ain't going to cry forever. You're not going to be in pain forever. Lazarus ain't going to be dead forever. You're not going to be dead forever. And sometimes when they pass that period of being able to be able to cope with it and able to handle it, when they pass that period, you feel like, you know what? I'm never going to return from this. Mm. This it's going to be a place where I may stay in the body. I'm not going to get better. I'm not going to. I'm not going to see it through. I'm not going to make it. Whatever God said in times past, it's not going to happen because you feel like He waited too long. You waited too long, God. God, why are you coming now? You waited too long. But in the same likeness, when Mary and Martha, even when they saw Him walking towards their abode, and they saw him walking towards their household in order to go to Lazarus. They didn't stop him. Mm -hmm. They said, you, if he had came sooner, he would not be dead. But I'm still going to allow you to come in. I'm still going to allow you to enter in because I know you can still do a work. I know that even if I feel that this is decayed, this is dead, and there's no return, I feel that you can go past what I can even imagine. You can go past that. And he said, wait, where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And when he saw him, he wept. Mm. Then, then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man, talking about Jesus, which opened up the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Sometimes you're going to be surrounded by people and things in your life. And you could be going through one of the toughest situations, the toughest seasons in your life. You gotta be careful who you allow, who you give your ear to, who you give your heart to, who you speak to in order to give your advice and encouraging words. Because some people aren't that smart and aren't that discerning on what you're going through. They won't always say the right thing. They won't always cater to how you feel. They won't always give you the right words to say because they are still, still to be, still to be men. They're not be able to to feel the way you need to be felt or to empathize or sympathize the way you need to feel like God can. And sometimes they're going to be just like these people, just like these Jews. They're going to question the situation in your life and see as if God cannot do it. They said, "Is it? Didn't God help you from this? Didn't God help you from that? Could He not do this?" Is he not able to do this? Is the God that you said not able to do this? Are you going to be stuck in this situation? Are you going to allow them questions to, to cloud your mind and cloud your mind, your, your judgment? Are you going to look at God and start questioning him? And saying that, God, you can't do this? Is this too hard for you? 
Is this not something that you're capable of or you're qualified for? Is this something that you're not able to perform? So they sat there and they, and they asked him, isn't it the same one to open the eyes of the blind and have caused it, have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. I'm telling you, this stone is popping up every which way. This stone is popping up every which way. My God, this stone is on top of the grave once again. Once again, once again, once again. Uh-huh. It's God, I'm telling you, God is putting people in the season, my God, where there is no return, where you're supposed to be stuck. Where the people feel you're supposed to be stuck and no return. But God wants you to be a witness and a testimony and say that if he can deliver me, yeah. he can deliver you. If he did it for me, yeah. he can do it for you. God has laid some stone on the top of your life and I feel it. I can't get above this. But God has said, let me move the stone. Let me roll the stone away. I'm the chief cornerstone. I'm the one who's above that, above the grave. Walking on top of the grave, my God. I'm the one who has the key. I'm the one and only Amen. who can resurrect you. I'm the one. God has placed a lot of stones in your life. Mm-hmm. He's allowed stuff to get heavy and yes. heavy yes. and heavy. Has suppressed you. Has suppressed you. And I kept you down this time. But God is saying that you will rise again. Uh-huh. You just like I rose, you will rise again. I'm not allowing this heavy matter to all these weights to lay you down for no reason. Just like the olive, my God, the oil got to come out with his breath. So God is pressing you right now. Yes, He's pressing right now. He's allowing that stone to lay on top of you. He's allowing that stone to rest on top of you. When you felt like, when others felt like there was no return, that it was sealed. The verdict is sealed that you are dead. That it's no return from this. You're never coming back from this. You're never coming back from this. But God is not a man that he should love. Amen. And God has done so many works in your life, has performed so many works in your life, that this situation right now, you got to say, even in this, Amen. you got to say, even in this, I know that this stone is going to roll away. Even in this, I know that this stone is going to roll if it's sickness. Even in this, I know this stone is going to roll away. Even if it's unemployment or poverty, even in this, I know this stone is going to roll away. Even in suicide, those depression, low self-esteem, and lack of or all these different things, the numbness that you feel, that you feel all these different boys. Even in this, I know that this stone is going to roll away. Mm. My, 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 my God. This grave is not meant for me. This is not where I would die. You got to speak this up. Man, I'm not going to die here. Yeah. This, this, I'm not going to die. My God, I'm not going to die here. Something else is going to die here. But I shall live and not die. Yeah. I shall live and not die. Yeah. Every chain that fell up in me, that's what's going to die. Everything that was holding me down, every generation of grace, every stronghold, every demon from hell that came to overwhelm me, that's what's going to die. But I will live on top. I will work on top of it. I will lay down, my God. I will lay down everything that was the take within me. I will lay down, I will fold it, and I will put it on the, on the side, and I will allow that stone to roll, and I will close that sepulchre, and I will close that too, and say that I am on top of this grave. What was meant to kill me did not kill me. But whatever God had in plan for me, it was for my good. All things work together. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. All things. All things. The bitter, the sweet, the salty, my God, the savory, everything. The joy, the sorrow, everything, the weakness, the strength, everything. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. So you may feel like death is around you. You may feel like that this is going to be the end for you. But all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. I need, you need a little dirt. You need a you need, you, 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 need, you need a little you need a little crud. You need a little mud. You need a little this a little that. You need you need a little something else. You need a you need that. You need that. You need that. My God. You need that. It's even in nature. My God. You ever heard of decompo? Uh, what's the word? Decomposition. Decomposition, and that's dead things. If you get a group of dead things, we get 
and old peels of like of bananas or fruits and all different things, all these different things, and you allow it to, to marinate and come together, but at the same time it is fertile. At the same time, it's allowing other things to grow. So even the bad thing that you feel in your life, that you feel like there ain't nothing to come back from that. God is saying that I am the one who is right. And if I choose it to use it for my glory, I will use it for my glory. If this situation is dead, I'm going to use that bad thing to bring life out of it. I will use that bad thing. To bring life out. I will allow the good and the bad to mix and mingle together. When you feel like this can't go together, this can't go in there, I'm going to allow these things to do what I need to come forth. I'm going to allow it to happen. Because what I'm going to do is beyond your imagination. What I'm going to do, you can't even fathom. But God is saying that I need you to get to that place. I need you to get to that place. Let that stone sit on top of you. It's not going to be there forever. It's not going to be there forever. And, and some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Uh-huh. Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him, was of, of him that was dead, saying unto him, Lord, 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 by this time he's thinking. Uh-huh. By this time he's thinking. Lord, 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 why are you trying to come your way to try to heal me? By this time, it's terminal. By this time, it's going to remain the same. By this time, I lost too much blood. By this time, I lost my mind. By this time, I lost my friends. By this time, they don't want to be with me anymore. By this time, it's too late. It's too late. What? God, why? Why why, why are you trying to give me this job now? Why are you trying to open this door now? By this time, I have no money. By this time, I sold everything and still have nothing. By this time, it's too late. It's too late. So the Lord said, by this time, they said, Lord, Lord, why? Why are you telling me to move this stone? And God is saying, in, in that symbolization, in that representation, in that moving of the stone, God is speaking to us and saying to open up your mouth, open up your arms unto me. Allow me to enter you into your situation. But a lot of us, we, we feel like that because we feel like this situation is dead, that God can handle it. We feel like that when we proclaim it to be dead and no return, that God cannot handle it. So we therefore don't give it to him. We don't give it to him. But God is saying that remove the stone. Remove the stone. Open it up to me that I may see what it is. Open it up to me. And then we're going to sit there and question God. By this time, God is too late. By this time, God, I went through hell and high water. By this time, God, I've lost so much. Why are you trying to perform? this now. By this time he's thinking. For he had been dead for four days. Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Glory of God. Are you going to believe? Mm-hmm. If God came at your situation, if he came at your aid, when you was at your last straw, are you still going to believe? Or do you feel like it's too late? Do you feel like the place that you're at right now, that God cannot handle it? Do you feel like you're so deep and you're so stuck that you're too far gone that God cannot handle it? Do you feel that God cannot handle your impossible? Do you feel that the that the that everything that you have tried, that even if God is going to try to attempt that it will not work, do you feel that God is not capable enough? Mm. Do you feel that God is not capable? Enough? So Jesus said unto her, "Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou should see the glory of God. See the glory of God. We need to see the glory of God. But the only way." That we could be able to see the manifestation of God's glory is you allow Him to deal with our impossible. Amen. I'm telling you, when God said we go from faith to faith, 
in the glory to glory, it was not a joke. It was not something just to say. It was not just words put on a piece of paper inside of a book. It was what exactly was supposed to be. God is saying that I am going to put you in the season of your life where the glory that you experienced on yesteryear, on yesterday, that is not going to be compared to what I'm going to do in your life right now. That if you want to see the glory of God, it coincides with your faith. If you want to see God to perform and to be magnified in your life, to do something that you felt like was impossible, it is all according to your faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. God was talking to Martha and Mary, and he was saying that, that Lazarus is not dead, even though he was dead. And a lot of times, God didn't want us to speak and say the opposite. He wants us to say what is not and what or what it will be. Because a lot of times we try to say what the reality of it is and say that it will always be this and that, it's, and that, it, that it, whatever I see, then that's what it is. But that's not what faith is. Faith is something that's, that's not even there. Faith is something that you speak that is not even there. When you see a situation that you feel like there's no return and say that there's victory in this. But I'm sick. I'm sick. My body's in pain. I'm going through this. How am I going to speak victory when victory is not seen here? How am I going to speak of these things and speak well of these things and speak these things in existence when it's not here yet? When it's not here. And a lot of times God has been his predicament to open our mouths to say these things in the midst of whatever we're going through. He doesn't want you to say that, oh, that I am sick, that I am broken, that I am hurt, that I am in pain. Or I would never get restored. And then once you allow yourself to say these things, you're going to allow your mind to be corrupted and warped. And you're not going to allow faith to enter into your heart. You're going to sit there and you're going to believe yourself. And then once you realize that life and death is in the power of your tongue, all you're going to be doing is speaking death over your life. And the situation is never going to change. And life itself is not going to truly happen or, or it's not going to manifest itself within your life. But you're going to keep on speaking that and say, I am this, I am that. That I'm, I'm never going to get through this. I'm never. I'm always going to be in this state. That my life is always going to be. This. I'm always going through that. I'm always going through this. And I and I'm, I'm always weak. No one's no one never knows what I'm going through. I feel like that. I'm going through the worst. I feel like that. No one understands what I'm going through. I feel like no one cares what I'm going through. You're going to be saying these things to yourself. Say these things to yourself. But God wants you to say the opposite. God wants you to say what, what you what is not there. What you feel like is not there, but still say it. He wants you to still believe what you are saying because a lot of times we feel that us in a situation where we're going through, it overwhelms us to the point, to the point where the word of God is not sufficient enough for our situation. We feel that we became too overwhelmed, our life has been too chaotic, that the word of God has lost its effect. And we felt that it broke, it lost its power. But God, I got God's power is everlasting to everlasting. When and how can this power be lost? When can there be a depletion from his power? It's not his power, but it's your faith in his power. You have to realize that you're not questioning the power of God. It's the faith that's in question. You've got to sit there and say, God, if you say you're still able to do this, then what's wrong? It ain't the problem. He's not the problem. It is you. He's not the problem. And you have to realize that God is just waiting for us to give him our faith. He said, just give me your faith and I will do the rest. Give me your trust me. Hold on to me. Never let me go obey my word and see the salvation of the Lord working in your life. Do these things. This, this. He just wants you to be along for the ride. Just say yes and say, God, I trust your name. I trust the word and I trust the power. And I know that whatever that you have planned for me, that it's going to be done and that it is well. But a lot of times we feel that in our situation that God is not capable of working. But God is not the one that has that question, but it's a faith that's that question. That's why Jesus Christ asked him. He said, said I not unto thee. If thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. He's asking a question. Are you, are, are you going to believe? 
Are you going to believe even in this? Are you going to believe when you feel like it's all hope is lost? Are you going to believe at this state? Are you going to believe? And a lot of times, God wants to put us in a predicament where, we, where, where believing sounds ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Where having faith sounds crazy because you're, 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 you're presented with a situation where it, it's past, the typical is past the logic. It's past what your mind even fathom. But God is saying that in that moment when you feel like, I, I can't even see this even getting better. I can't even see the bright side of this. I just feel like everything is dark and everything is going wrong. He's saying in that moment, speak faith. Amen. In that moment, trust me Amen. and see and watch what happens. In that moment, put your trust in me and watch what happens. And it says, then they took away the stone in obedience to God. They took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou had heard me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he was, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound with the nap with the napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things that Jesus had Jesus had done, believed on him. But some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told them that the things Jesus had done. But it said, He and he that was there came forth, bound hand and foot with gray clothes, and his face was bound with the napkin. And Jesus said unto him, Loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. God is getting ready to drop every chain and every shackle that you felt like it was on top of you and you felt like that was around you. God is waiting for you. He's waiting for you to get to that moment where you feel like you're wrapped up, tied up, and you feel like there's no escape for you. God is waiting for you to get in that moment where you felt like this is the end above all ends. That this is my dead end. This is my rock bottom. This is it. This is it. He wants you to get in that predicament. He wants you to get in that predicament. He wants you to get in that predicament because he wants to be glorified. He wants to prove himself to not only you but to, but to the bystanders. He wants to show forth his glory in your life that when he does it, that you can't even deny it. He wants you to be in a predicament where everybody's looking at you and everybody down at you. But when God started to move in your life, that all they could say was God did it. And that the only way that you got out of this situation was because of him. He doesn't want nobody else to have credit. He doesn't want nobody else to be glorified. He doesn't want the doctors to be glorified. He doesn't want the therapists to be glorified. He doesn't want the employees, all these different people, the pastors, the preachers, your brothers, your sisters, your mother. He don't want them to be glorified. So he needs to allow them to get out of the way, out of the picture, out of the equation, out of the formula. Because they not going to work. But only me, only I, I am the only one who can deliver you, who can help you, who can rescue you, who can heal you, who can save you, who can set you free. Who can set you free. I am going to be the only one who is meant for this predicament. I am the only one who can do what I can do. I am the only one. Because it could have been a different way. You could have been went to the doctors. You could have said it's been the medication. It's been the therapy. It's been the people I've been talking to. It's been the preaching. It's been the pastors. 
spend it. It's been all these different people. You could have gave them credit, but they've been performed. But God wants you to get to that point where none of them work. Where none of them work. Where they feel like that even when you got some of the encouragement, when you got some of the advice, when you got some of that outside external help, that it lasted up for a moment. But he wants you to realize that I am the everlasting God. And whatever I give unto you, Let you go. Oh, that's Lord. 
involuntary. It's going to let you go. It's going to have to let you go. Because God said it. It's going to have to obey the voice of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's going to have to obey the voice of the Lord. So you better say that my, my God, my God, these grave clothes is not meant for me. These clothes are not meant for me. These shackles are not meant for me. I will not get comfortable in this. This is not meant for me to stay here.
I need to do this good thing. We can't allow God to perform in our life prematurely. We're not going to allow God to do that. He's not going to allow himself to do that. He wants whatever he does to be sealed and done and that there be no flaw in it. So we can't push God hand and say, God, do this now. Do this now. Help me in this situation now. Take me out of this. I'm not allowing this situation to be removed from me. I'm taking this from you, all these different things. But God is saying that I need you to be in this a little bit longer. I need you to be cooked a little bit longer. I need you to be in that fire a little bit longer. I need you to be refined. Every infirmity, everything needs to be taken out of you. I need to add some things inside of you. I need you to wait. Mm. I need you to wait. But God is past the time. It's past, it's past the time. If you had came sooner, then, then the situation wouldn't be what it is right now. But God is saying, wait. Yeah. Wait. God's timing it's always right. Amen. God's timing is better than our timing. Amen. And we have to realize that because we can't feel that God ways are our ways. Because if it was up to us, we wouldn't go through nothing. If it was up to us, we wouldn't, end. we wouldn't endure the pain that we've been enduring up to this present time. We wouldn't be suffering how you're suffering right now. We wouldn't experience the pain that we experience right now. Because we don't want to experience that. Every time we think of pain and suffering, it's always a negative connotation. It's always a negative output. It's always a negative representation. But God is saying that I do all things well and I'll do all things good. And other plans that I have for you are not of evil. But they are good. So whatever God is doing in your life, whatever God has planned in your life, that all that bad stuff that you feel that you're going through is part of the plan. All that hurt and that pain is part of the plan. It's part of the plan. It's part of the perfected of you. And God is saying that if you allow me to do the things that I know I can do, you just trust in me and trust in what I say and what I have done before. Because he has done so many things in our lives before time. But a lot of times we tend to forget on the things he has done. But we just came back from a service saying September to remember. And before we even got to that service, I was sitting there. I was talking to the Lord. I said, God, I thank God for memory. I thank God for memory. I thank God that I can recollect and I can rethink on things that happen. Amen. Whether it be good or bad. Because in that memory, it brings me joy. In that memory, I relive it again. In that memory, it helps me not to forget. So I thank God for memory. I say, God, I can sit on my bed. I can lay on my bed when I'm going through hell, hot, and water. And I can put it, I'm going through the worst of the worst. And I can sit there and think about God. I remember when you delivered me from this. Yeah. God, I remember when I was stuck in that situation and that you came and reached and grabbed me and cleaned me up and set me free. I remember when I wanted to kill myself and I took the pills and I put the knife to my neck and put the knife to my arm. That it didn't work, but that you kept me and you changed my mind and you removed my mind, my God. I thank God I can remember. What you have done for me. Yeah. I thank God that I still have the same, same mind, my God, that I'm able to recollect what you have done for me. I know a lot of things that we tend to forget and we want to forget because it's weighing down on us too bad. But God has put, my God, God has done some things in our life that we cannot forget, that we cannot afford to forget. Because if you afford to forget, you will soon to forget who He is. That's what the song says. I can't forget. What, what God has done for me, I cannot Never forget. forget. Now he has set me free. I yeah. can't forget how he has brought me out. I can't forget. No, never. I cannot forget. I can't forget. And it, and it wears me when I start to forget. There is so much that God has done and is doing right now. So much that God has done and is doing right now. So sometimes you got to sit there and thank God for memory. Thank God that you can remember. Thank God that you can remember how you was and how you are now. Thank God that you can remember what my God. Thank God you can remember that how God changed your life around. When you was once doing this, but now you're doing that. When you once felt like this, but now you feel like that. When you was going through this, but now you're going through that. When you once was this, but now you're that. Thank God for the, the things to remember. Thank God that you can remember. Thank God you can remember His goodness. In his mercy. Stand all over the room. Stand all over the room. 
And God is speaking to us today that a lot of us can't say that our situation is impossible unto God. Because God wants to do the impossible in your life. So whatever you feel like is impossible, whatever you feel like has not changed as of yet, whatever you feel like that you that it can't get better than this, give that unto God. Give that unto God. Give your impossible unto God and allow him to move and to work. And don't be afraid when you feel like it's too late. As long as you are living, as long as God is God, as long as He is faithful unto His word, it is never too late. It is never too late. And God is saying that if you feel like that I'm moving too slowly, I'm, I'm, I'm delayed. Remove yourself out of the picture and trust in me. Trust in me. Trust in me. My ways are not your ways. Trust in me. I know Lazarus is dead. I know it's been four days. But I think and I'm glad that I was not dead. Because if I was dead, it wouldn't give you the faith that you have now. God is putting in a situation where he needs our faith to be built up. He's gonna delay, he's gonna wait a little bit longer. So your faith becomes stronger and stronger and stronger in you. Come on and give God praise for his word on tonight. Lord Jesus, 
that anything that we go through under the sun that is not a submit, that is not catch you by surprise, but you know all that you feel all that you care for all, that you ask asking us to lay aside every weight and you know that every care that is cast upon us, Mark, every weight that is cast upon us, we cast it upon you because we know that you care for us, Lord Jesus. We want you to move in our life, my God, Lord Jesus. We want you to act your way in our life. So even if you feel like it's too late, it's not too late, Lord Jesus. Even if you feel like you should have came over here, you came right on time, my God. You came right on time, my God. I know that I felt pain here. I felt a little bit suffering. I know I never took that pain. But I thank God that I felt that pain. Because in that pain, I know that in the moment that when you come to my rescue, you will be that when you do, you're going to do it well, and you're going to do it good. Thank but even if I feel like this is not the current, my God, that you're going to deliver me from the lions, and I'm going to deliver me from sickness, and I'm going to deliver me from every past struggle, every trauma, everything that you're going to overwhelm and pull me down, and try to put me down, my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Th
hold you. Can you ever last to ever last? Can you ever last to ever last? So God, I give you glory. And I give you all honor. And I give you all praise. If you love the Lord, open up your mouth and give Him a shout and a praise that He deserves. Oh, Lord Jesus. 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 Oh, Lord Jesus name. Amen. Bless you.